happens to be one of my favorite, uh, all-time favorite gospels because anyone who's worked in the area of, of medicine knows very well how important faith is to the healing process. And if you've had a, an illness, you know. The uh, blind better, beggar got Bartimaeus, as lay, preach, lay, lay preacher Andy Otto points out, has a Jesus encounter that is not simply a story of an ophthalmological miracle, but one of profound inner transformation for Bartimaeus. His very name, Bartimaeus, gives us a clue. In Hebrew, bar, on the front of a, a word, means that you are the son of, and you're the son of the person who is named. Timaeus, as they pointed out, means honored one or valued one. That may have been true for Bartimaeus' dad, but not for him. In Jesus' day, and sadly in our own, <clears throat> disabled people were considered less than others, even non-persons, or at least invisible people. Well, Bartimaeus probably was not blind from birth. He was cast into obscurity for almost all of his life, begging at that gate to Jericho. However, it's been said that sometimes in order to uh, truly see, you have to have been blind at some point. While physical sight might not have been his gift, Bartimaeus did have one great gift. He had heard of Jesus, and he believed, believed in his ability to heal. Jesus even had among his followers after his resurrection, a physician, a man of science in that early day. His name was Luke. Luke was the one, the gospel writer, and said to be, as physicians were in that day, a doctor. He considered Jesus, however, the greatest healer of body and soul, you know, God's own physician on earth. So when Bartimaeus hears this crowd saying that Jesus was there among them, he shouts with hope, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Of course, the crowd tries to shush this useless blind man, but he refused to stop shouting. And Jesus hears his words of belief, but Jesus asks of him one more thing. He tells Bartimaeus to get up, and following Jesus' voice, to run to him. What a moment of pure trust that was, as preacher Otto points out, not only to restore his sight, but also his dignity. He's running in his own darkness to that sound of hope. Bartimaeus runs to Jesus and goes from being the discounted to the disciple who starts following him from that point on. You know, we're talking today about science as part of our series. And if you wish, science combined with pure faith complement one another when healing occurs. And you see this in this gospel because what Jesus says to him when he runs to him is, your faith has saved you. Of course, today we think of science more in terms of test tubes and medicines and hypotheses and vaccines, but there are so many indicators that the strength of our beliefs also enhance the efficacy of modern science's wonderful role in healing. Uh, I never would have expected this from the uh, author, but uh, Martin Luther King was the one who ma made this statement. <coughs> He says, science gives man knowledge, which, which is power. Religion gives man wisdom, which is control. Science deal, deals mainly with facts. Religion deals mainly with values. The two are not rivals. They are complementary. So <clears throat> science is not the opposite of faith. Faith and science are two lenses for looking at the world and comprehending its completely complex and wondrous nature. 
science and faith can work together. You know, and sometimes <clears throat> we can learn something, some interesting things, some perspectives on things we see almost every day and never quite see as other people do. If you read E-Tidings this week, you've already heard this story, but I'll, I'll share it. <clears throat> Our colleague Bob Batello uh, was talking this week to a pilot friend of his, and he called me after he had this conversation. He said he explained to the, to the, to the pilot how he is working, partnering to, uh, with the church to, pre to preserve First Church and make beautiful re renovations to the buildings. So Bob's friend said he was glad to hear that, <clears throat> and then said to Bob, Bob, I don't know if you realize how important the church tower is to us pilots when we're getting ready to land at the airport. When we're getting ready to, when we're getting ready to start our descent, we all look for that little gold dome. As then that's the exact point, the exact point where we can plot the coordinates so that we can land safely on the landing strip at the airport. I thought that was great, a symbol of faith assisting science to go home. What a wonderful metaphor for the way it should be in our own lives. Faith and science. You know, for these past few weeks, I've been presenting to you Dr. Francis Collins' thoughts on The Road to Wisdom, his book, The Road to Wisdom, Truth, Science, Faith, and Trust, as a roadmap to use when negotiating this kind of fear-filled path in our highly political world today. Dr. Collins is someone who became fascinated, fascinated with science when he saw all the ways that people suffer. I imagine that's the way Jesus looked out at us, seeing all the ways we could suffer. So when he became a med student, when uh, Dr. Collins became a med student, he did sort of find a way to help them. As a young man, he was a dyed-in-the-wool atheist. He had no religious background. But especially when he started studying DNA, he saw that it was probably involved as a cause in so many of these illnesses. So he began to research and pick it as his field. The more he tested, the more he studied, the more he saw the fingerprints of a grand designer in everything he studied in DNA. Over time, his research led to a personal belief and faith in God. He became a primary author with a group of his uh, colleagues in the discovery of the human genome. And if you know what that is, it was, it's the recipe, the recipe for human beings the starting point at which we can fix errors that uh, lead to human suffering. Sometimes the code in DNA is broken or deformed, and this is where healing can start. One day, he, at first it was not uh, uh, terribly uh, uh, impressive to him, but one day, instead of the usual dry lecture in the med school class, a pediatrician brought in with him not statistics and slides shows, but people. He brought in a young man with sickle cell anemia, a child with Down syndrome, and an infant with an in, inborn metabolic disorder. The doctor challenged all those young doctors to see these as the consequences of misspellings in the DNA instruction book. Dr. Collins was, from that point on, hooked on dedicating his life to finding the errors and fixing them. So after years of work, he and his team co compiled the human genome, all three billion letters of it. Not only did it lead to the discovery of a cure for cystic fibrosis, but also sickle cell, and opened the door to so many other scientific miracles. But more than that, <clears throat> and the reason why he, he, he included science in this particular book, <clears throat> is the, the, that the human, human genome showed us one important thing for all of us, that we, uh, we humans are all one family. 
all one family. Regardless of our race or physical appearance or ancestral background of any person, the parts of the genome that are important for function are 99.9% .9 the same for everyone. We are literally all part of one family. Why I include this book about, in, in, about people and relating to one another in, uh, today? Collins says this, our current divisiveness has incorporated certain long-standing society prejudices and attitudes. Breaking down these boundaries will depend on both recognizing the truths of our universal relatedness and reclaiming the lesson of the Good Samaritan that we are most honorable when we seek to help others who are not of our own tribe. We are most honorable when we seek to help others who are not of our own tribe. I think that's beautiful. <clears throat> Ironically, one of the characteristics of our troubled world today is an increasing distrust in science, medicine, and institutions of learning. And the news media, I say, has a major role to play in this. <clears throat> whenever, <clears throat> whenever they highlight often as breaking news, you noticed everything these days is breaking news? Uh, whenever they highlight uh, and they give equal weight, weight to debunk stories and the, the, true, uh, the truth, you know, for instance, where the promoting that the MMA vaccine causes autism, it doesn't, the COVID vaccine causes heart attacks, or that the COVID vaccine itself is a governmental plot. It's not. Yeah. The thing is, when you're faced with threatening circumstances, as so many of us feel these days, that produce anxiety and frustration and a feeling of loss of control, a conspiracy story provides a new version of the truth that namely says that there's a secret organization or a secret, secret individual who's causing the, the trouble. Listen to anything today and you'll hear this. Then this special knowledge oddly becomes a source of comfort as well as a scapegoat for everything that's going wrong. How can we help when we're confronted by people holding such drastically different truths? Here's the suggestion. Focus instead on the universal things that matter to us all. Goodness, family, faith, love, truth, and freedom. We can speak about how we share the same desire for a brighter tomorrow well, we can work to make this world safer and to make our children more free. While it may not feel like it at first, there is comfort in knowing that we can respect the other as a member of God's family, even if we may not agree on the truth. The healing starts when we replace contempt with listening and maybe even wisdom on the long road. Amen. I wish you peace this week. I hope to find it myself. I ask you all to be careful because there is so much negativity in the air to make sure that it doesn't infect the way you treat people. Make sure that as annoying as some people can be, you don't annoy them back. Try to bring peace to everything you do this week. And take some time for yourself to be in peace, to be in silence if that's what does it for you, to be in the sounds of nature on a walk if that's what does it for you. Be as kind to yourself as I'm <coughs> asking you to be to others. And we'll be together an hour early. An hour, uh, uh, an hour. Uh, you'll be leaving an hour early, and you get an another hour of sleep next week. So, with that, until that point, may God bless you and keep you. May God make God's face shine upon you, and be gracious to you, and hold you up in love and peace.
Amen.